Hey guys, how's it going? I think that I can actually do some recording tonight, so it's like a couple nights after I said I was going to, but I decided that I was going to write some fan fiction the last couple nights when I got home and just drink some coffee and uh, I wrote a couple of stories, so it was just stuff I had on my mind at work that I was laughing at and I just wanted to get it out there, but now I got that out of my system, so yeah, I want to go over Proverbs chapter 21, and it is almost midnight right now. I got off work a couple hours ago. Sorry, I know it's rude to drink and eat stuff on camera, but I'm just uh, freestyling this. And <laughs> I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, I guess. But, um, yeah, so anyway... It's kind of odd, uh, how am I supposed to look at the camera and read my Bible at the same time? Chapter 21, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Now, that's an interesting, uh, verse. I would like to look at that more. It seems like that's what I say for every verse that I read now, but... This is interesting to me because it seems like a verse that Calvinists would use that, you know, everything is the will of the Lord. So if, you know, our leader is good or our leader is bad, it's because the, the Lord made him that way. I don't believe that to be true. And so what's the correct interpretation of this verse? The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. You know, it makes me think that everybody's heart is in the hand of the Lord. All of our lives are you know, in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Interesting. And it has Ezra 6.22 as a reference, but I don't really know. I'm not going to look at that right now. So, um, he turneth it whithersoever he will. I'm just going to keep reading, but that's definitely a verse that I want to look into as soon as I'm done recording this. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. And this gives Luke 16.15 as a reference, but I know, again, we previously read something pretty much almost exactly the same earlier in Proverbs. In fact, I think it was almost one of the first verses in one of the chapters, I don't know, let's see, mm. <clears throat> maybe I'm wrong, oh, well, no, I don't know, I don't know where it was, see if it was one of the first verses. Maybe not, but I know that it was read not that long ago. Okay, well, anyway. So every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. So the Lord is really the judge of, you know, what's good and what's not. That's the whole point of that. Uh, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And this reminds me exactly of a verse in the... Gospels. And I don't know if it's specifically in one of them or in all of them. If it was in Math Matthew, I remember uh, when I was got saved and started going to church, and I was reading, and I remember um, it was one of those verses where I think the Lord said, "Go and learn what this means that the Lord uh, would rather have mercy than sacrifice." Something like that. It's pretty similar. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice.
Hmm. And uh, I remember just asking the preachers what that meant, that, that verse in the... Um, <clears throat> in the Gospels, and they never really gave me like a good answer, and then I, I did a lot of studying on it, and I was going to do a whole teaching on it, and I never did, but I really need to do that. And I think I was just thinking, I don't know, it's, um, just to think off the top of my hand, kind of drawing blanks, but, you know, I thought of it, I think I thought of it kind of more as the Lord, you know, would rather have mercy than to demand sacrifice basically or you know it's just basically like the sacrifices aren't pleasing to the Lord without faith right like all the rituals all the stuff that the Jews did were meaningless if they didn't have faith in God they weren't going to get them into heaven alone like that so I kind of think of it as that It's kind of it's kind of the same as this Paul saying that um, that salvation is by faith and not by works because we would make like God a debtor. You know, God doesn't owe anybody. We owe God, right? So, but another verse that I need to look into more. And, I mean, to do to do justice and judgment just makes me sense, makes me think to do righteousness or just to do the right thing. God wants us to have faith and do the right thing and follow Him more than um, you know doing works or whatever just to please Him, like like dead works. I don't know. Um, I sit weird in my chair, I'm like sitting on my knees, so I know it's probably terrible on my legs, but sometimes it's comfortable, it's probably a bad thing. And high look in the proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. What does it mean, the plowing of the wicked? Is that literal, like plowing the fields, like everything that they do, but I don't think so. I think it has to do something else with the characteristic, because the, a look, you know, a high look, a haughty look, Thinking that they're higher than other people, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but to everyone that is hasty only to want. And so it's a good thing to be diligent because their plenteousness, those that are hasty, those, you know, in this generation where everybody wants instant gratification, only find themselves wanting more. <sighs> but being patient. Uh, can pay off better in the long run. <clears throat> I know I'm leaning back, I'm too far from the microphone, so I'm sorry, I'm moving all over. This is gonna be a weird video if anybody watches this, if anybody at all ever watches this. <laughs> I just like making videos, so it doesn't matter. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro. Mm. Getting of treasures. <laughs> Vanity toss to and fro of them that seek death. So it all sounds like meaningless and empty. Um, so, I mean, getting of treasures by a lying tongue is, you know, getting something that you didn't earn in an honest way. And, um,. Doing such is just it's just emptiness and uh, yeah, 
just makes me think of the people that just like illegally sell drugs and stuff and they think that they're you know getting a lot of money and they think like money is everything to them and getting it in their manner of way they think they're getting ahead somehow you know then they get caught and they lose everything and lose their lives in prison and even outside of prison it's like their lives aren't great but you know or stealing just stealing stuff it's a you know it's dishonest it's like the lying tongue the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment the way of man is froward and strange but as for the pure his work is right it is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a white house <laughs> seems kind of out of the blue that verse the soul of the wicked desireth evil is that so the corner of the house top is kind of like an attic so i'm thinking of <clears throat> the soul of the wicked desireth evil his neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes so does that mean that the neighbor of the wicked since the wicked only desires evil, the neighbor can't you can't you know have any trust or any help or anything from the evil neighbor. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. So this is encouraging punishment of the wicked the righteous may wisely considereth the house of the wicked the righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness whoso stopped his ears at the cry of the poor he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. So it makes me think, I'm going back to verse 12, because that kind of stuck in my head. It makes me think of the righteous man considers the house of the wicked, but God's the one that overthrows them. So that kind of makes me think of earlier and how we read a lot of times that vengeance is the Lord's. And so... You know, we need to be aware of people that are, you know, involved in wrongdoing and all that. Um, you know, we need to have good judgment. <clears throat> but ultimately, the Lord's going to be the one to deal with them. I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't defend ourselves or, you know, call the police or whatever it need be. If, you know, if we see somebody, you know, stealing or something, we should report it. But, um, you know, ultimately, the Lord's going to deal with them. But, you know, verse 13 is really good. Whoever stops his ears at the cry of the poor, he shall cry, but no one will, no one will hear him. And that's just, it's kind of do good unto others, you know, as you would have them do unto you. And, um... This is kind of a warning, warning, you know, not to ignore people that are in need. And we have so many opportunities every day. Every day we have new opportunities presented to us, you know, especially if you're in public. I guess if you're, like, in the house secluded 24-7 or something, you might not have those opportunities. But me, being at work all the time, being around people, you know, there's always more opportunities where I could try to be a better person and try to help people and satisfy them better but some people just can't be satisfied or helped at all <laughs> that's just the way it is but we yeah, have with people that are really in need here
and also I mean it's like in today's world I don't know it's like I know in some places where there are the poor like in bigger cities like not where I live but places that I've lived before where they have the red halls and stuff you know and there can be poor sleeping outside and you know it wasn't too far from my apartment that I lived doesn't mean like if you have people begging you for money every day like you should give them money every day or anything like that it doesn't mean that but generally you know that if somebody needs help you know in whatever way we should be courteous and listen yeah, but you know and I don't know You know, we need to learn how to make sacrifices, but not to the point where, you know, we're doing ourselves in, totally. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. So, I'm not really sure exactly what that means. I mean, a gift in secret pacifies anger. That's easy to understand. Okay, a gift can make somebody happy, change somebody's attitude, whatever. And a reward in the bosom, strong wrath. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what that part means. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so... It's saying that the gift can pacify its anger, and it's basically saying a reward uh, can pacify in the bosom strong wrath, or in the bosom can pacify strong wrath. It's basically what it's saying. So it's kind of just repeating itself twice. I get it now. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of inequity. It sounds like something we've heard a million times in Proverbs. It's good for the just and bad for the unjust. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. And I remember, I think that Brian Denlinger would use this verse um, for church buildings and stuff and talk about how they're the congregations of the dead. I mean, probably lots of people use this. Um, but I remember going across that verse a lot. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. basically saying the same thing again he that loveth wine and oil will be poor he that loveth pleasure shall be poor so always you know somebody who's selfish is always concerned about making themselves happy and everything um, they're not thinking correctly <laughs> the wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and a, the transgressor for the upright I'm just thinking about how this is just kind of like the verse, verse 14, where he, again, where he's repeating himself twice, basically, he says the rick, wicked and the righteous the first time, and then he says the transgressor and the upright the second time, and that they'll be a ransom for each other, basically. The wicked will be a ransom for the righteous, and the transgressor will be a, a ransom for the upright. which exactly, I'm not, I'm still kind of not really sure exactly what that means. A ransom makes me think of like a reward. And I'm thinking like their destruction or their, their, um, you know, God's vengeance upon them will be, is, is, is the reward kind of, I guess is what I'm thinking. 
It is better to dwell in the wildness, wilderness, sorry, than with a contentious and angry woman. <laughs> it's like what he said earlier, it's better to dwell in the corner of the housetop with a brawling woman. It's better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Again, it's like, why is this just <laughs> randomly thrown in there? <laughs> Maybe, uh, was there, like, one of his wives or something was, like, nagging at him at the time when he wrote this? And he's like, you know what, I'm going to put this in here. <laughs> um, I don't know, but, yeah, we don't want to deal with a nagging woman. Uh, there is treasure to be desired, and oil in the dwelling of the wise... But a foolish man spendeth it up. They're not good with planning. They're not good with listening or learning or judgment. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. The wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. It's interesting all these contrasts to where it talks about like financially and being productive and stuff is a good thing and like being wise will lead to these things and how the wicked will basically have nothing because they didn't plan but then also it's like spiritually how it's good to be content and good to have nothing in some ways than than to have it all you know it's better to have wisdom than to have riches but if you have wisdom then it can lead to riches <laughs> so that's interesting. So a wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. So is it just saying, like again, that wisdom, having wisdom, is um, basically like you could rule a city? <laughs> not, Not like literally like because you're so wise or whatever but basically just like an analogy of how strong and important that wisdom is or is it I don't know because it says cast it down the confidence there that's probably what it means I'm not really sure what confidence means in this uh, context like that It's probably getting too literal. It probably is like an analogy like that, like I said. Does it mean cast it down the strength of the confidence there? Is the strength of the confidence like basically like the army, like guarding the city? Like, like, uh, you could basically just take over the whole city because you're wise. Who so keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Keep your mouth shut. Stay out of trouble. I've known that one. And I probably should have done that a lot more. But I think I tend to do that more than not. But my mouth's got the best of me a lot of times. I'm sure it still will. Proud and haughty scorner is his name who dealeth in proud wrath. <laughs> kind of like that verse <clears throat> proud and haughty scorner is his name who dealeth in proud wrath the desire of the slothful killeth him for his hands refuse to labor he coveteth greedily all the day long but the righteous giveth and spareth not I think we've read something similar to this too but it's interesting that it's just saying that people that just want to keep like all their belongings they're very materialistic and they just want more and more and more 
but they're never satisfied, but yet the righteous can have, you know, little or have whatever they have and still share it and help others and still and, and be content. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? So that's very important there. That makes me wonder if that kind of ties back into the beginning of verse 3, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. This says the sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bring it with a wicked mind? But over on verse 3 it says to do justice and judgment. So that would be a right mind. And that is acceptable to the Lord more than sacrifice. So sacrifices isn't what ever saved anybody. <laughs> Uh, false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. The false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. So... I'm kind of curious about that verse. I'm not sure if I totally get that, but it makes me think of something, again, that was said earlier. Where it's like... Um, like those who... Those who tell tell tales are like the same ones that listen to them. You know, like those who like to hear lies are those who tell lies. And so when it says, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly it makes me think that the, the man that heareth false witness speaketh constantly false, wit, false witness that's kind of what, what makes me think that maybe I'm wrong about that a wicked man hardeneth his face but as for the upright he directeth his way verse 30 there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord absolutely not because the Lord is all wise. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. And so that makes me think is that like um, physical and spiritual with the horse, you know, in our actual warfare, the physical warfare, but safety ultimately the spiritual is of the Lord but even the physical I mean that the Lord protects us that's it that's it for Proverbs chapter 21 so thanks for watching guys and this is probably 30 minutes too long but I'm going to end it here so God bless see ya